could you hear me as well oh yeah we can hear you just fine okay great we start yeah absolutely hi everyone today is international day of the girl a day where we celebrate what girls can accomplish today i have some very special guests the duke and duchess of sussex hi prince harry and meghan i am so excited and honored to have you today with me and today we'll talk about education and how we can empower all girls to have access to quality and safe education i was lucky that i had a father who believed in me and who allowed me to have my own voice and to be able to go to school and continue learning how was your childhood and what role did education play in the growth and in the learning of both of your lives well malala firstly just thank you so much for having us it's such an important day i would say for of course girls all over the world but for everyone all over the world because as you know and as we believe as well when young girls have access to education everyone wins and everyone succeeds it just opens the door for societal success at the highest level so we're really happy to join you today in terms of education i'm certainly very grateful that not only did i have the ability to go to school at a young age but also to continue in in university I know, it's hard it's hard to follow that um but i it, it, we do take it for granted um and it is a it is a privilege but every single person every single child every single young person across the world needs an education and to know that there's over 130 million uh, girls out of education right now before the pandemic and i've been during as well and the numbers are only going to go up it worries me and probably worries all of us the 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 effect that that is going to have not just on the individual but on the family on the community on the country and on the, and on, on the world at large to be able to raise our son in a way where everything about his nourishment is in terms of educational substance and how you can learn and how you can grow you know having the privilege of being able to go to school is something that i think oftentimes is taken for granted it's very difficult for a lot of people to recognize that just the ability to have a school book is a luxury for so many people and to have grown up where books were plentiful and i could wet my appetite and continue to learn when i was within the grounds of the school or when i was back home again i'm hugely grateful for the education that i was lucky enough to have at the time i certainly probably wasn't as grateful but looking back on it now i'm very very blessed with with having such an amazing opportunity 100% i think it takes boys slightly longer to understand how important education is but they get there in the end uh and uh, you know you you're blessed that you have such a great companion megan uh megan you have been an advocate for girls education and women's rights around the world you have worked with the association of commonwealth universities and you have also been focused on sanitation in countries like india and rwanda of all the issues that you could pick why did you choose girls education you know similar to you i think you see something that is so critical to be addressed and is so critical to be fixed and that by fixing that one thing you end up fixing multiple problems and so you know what i had realized very early on was that when women have a seat at the table conversations in terms of policy change conversations in terms of legislation certainly in terms of just the dynamics of a community are all shifted and typically when a woman is present at the table she's going to be advocating for an entire family as opposed to a patriarchal presence and so when you have to see how do you get a woman to embrace her voice well you have to start with where she is as a young girl part of the reason that I did the work in India and also um some work in Rwanda as well was to look at learning and education for young women and then separately to look at the hindrances that women in India were facing with menstrual health management and the stigmatization of that really inhibiting them from being able to go to school and that alone creates a ripple effect for your entire life and prince harry i would like to know from you as well your focus has been on the climate change and our environment do you see the role of education and especially girls education in that and how we can use that uh, to ensure that we tackle the issue of climate change the importance of girls education uh, to help with uh, to sort of curb climate change is absolutely critical and again with an education provides provides money provides an income which makes you less susceptible to disaster 
less consumption. So all of these things are so deeply connected yes. to one another that I think mm -hmm. that education at a young age opens up so many doors and so many opportunities and so many possibilities. And whether it's whether it's within science, whether it's within government, women are needed more and more to be able to fill those gaps because the opportunity is is vast. And I think what well, we know that the world will benefit um, exponentially from it. You know, Malala, actually, it's it's really interesting. We were thinking about it too in the landscape of COVID, how it's affecting so many people. But you recently graduated from Oxford, and that was within the the climate of COVID. How has that felt for you in terms of transitioning out of what was such a, I can only imagine, incredibly special, pivotal chapter of your life, and to do it in in this bubble that we all are living in at the moment? I must say, it was a very difficult time. Uh, I graduated at home. I was taking my exams at home. And it was it was very difficult not to be in college anymore, not to be with friends, not to have those traditional ceremonies. And, you know, in Oxford, uh, you go to the exam schools and you take your exams wearing a gown and then you celebrate it with this thing called trashing, whether it's through shaving foam and different holy powder and colors on you. It's all just part of that university life that, you know, we all missed. Uh, but I was still, I was blessed that I had the opportunity to still learn from home. You know, right now there are already 130 million girls out of school, but an additional 20 million more girls are at risk of dropping out of school because of this pandemic. They are at risk of never being able to return to their schools uh, because they are likely to be pushed into early child marriages or they might become the breadwinners or financial supporters of their families. Uh, so I am more worried about those girls right now. I think this pandemic uh, is is a crisis uh, in, in the sector of education, and we need to focus on investment in education right now. It is needed more than ever. What you say is so important for people to remember, because it's not just robbing a society of the cultural richness that comes with educating young girls and allowing them the opportunity to develop into strong, educated women. It's also robbing these young girls of a childhood. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent agree, and uh, you know, right now we are working in more than eight countries through Malala Fund, uh, where girls' education is needed. Uh, you know, urgently because these countries have the highest number of girls out of school, and there's also the gender gap when it comes to girls' education. Uh, and what I have learned from my own experience, you know, speaking as an activist and my dad being an activist, is that supporting local educators and activists has a huge role uh, in transforming societies and communities. So we are working with girls' education activists in these eight countries, including Nigeria, Brazil, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and India. They are identifying the issues that girls are facing locally because the issues vary when it comes to lack of access to education. In some places, it is transport issues. In other places, it is lack of infrastructure. In other places, it is the cultural norms and, uh, and, and traditions. Uh, but these local activists are now adapting to the COVID changes, especially uh, because girls are back home, they are uh, they are not able to access their schools, so they're finding new ways in which they can ensure that girls do not miss out on their education. In Nigeria, our activists are using the radio there, uh, in which they are doing daily lessons and, uh, and, and courses in education, so children do not miss out. And, you know, globally, we have recognized that how important it is that children continue learning. When children are not in school, the economies, the society, they're losing so much. This is a loss in minds and in, in intellect, in invention and in innovation. So much is at stake when we don't give a young woman the opportunity to learn and to get an education. And I think there's no greater time for all of us to acknowledge that with everything else happening with COVID, on International Day of the Girl, for each of us to make a commitment that, yes, the layers upon layers that are happening in this context of COVID-19 are immense, but all it has done is add on top of the problems that were already existing, mm -hmm. specifically in the sector of young girls. So, you know, I think from our standpoint, we wonder how can we and all of the rest of us here help you continue with this incredible work that you're doing? What are the tangible things that you could do to assist and support right now? For me, I have been in that fight for a long time now, uh, since I was 11. It started with, with me, myself, and now, you know, there are millions of girls that need our voice and, uh, you know, that need us to, to work for their future. Uh, COVID has made things worse. We cannot ignore this. Uh, this is an emergency right now, uh, and this is a crisis right now. We need to ensure that in this time, we 
uh, do not uh, ignore the issue of girls' education, even in these global gatherings and meetings. The issue of girls' education is hardly mentioned. Uh, people are not talking about women's safety and protection anymore. And there's no actual commitment towards uh, girls' education uh, and women's pr protection and empowerment. It's really important that we keep on pushing for this, that we ensure that girls do not miss out their education, they do not drop out, that they're able to return safely to school. And we also need to find new ways in which uh, we ensure that we can have a world where all girls can go to school and everybody can can do their help in that, you know, push your government, push your local leaders, write to them, go to Malala Fund's website, uh, and, and you can find all the ways in which you can help. I really want to thank you, um, Prince Harry and Meghan, for your time today. But I have one final sort of last question for you, and that is, how are you spending your time in COVID? Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> on, on, on Zoom. <laughs> on Zoom been, call. On video conference on calls. Zoom. <laughs> but outside of that, with our little one. We were both there for his first steps, his first run, his first fall, his first everything. Else. And it's just fantastic because I think in, in so many ways, we are fortunate to be able to have this time to watch him grow. And in the absence of COVID, we would be traveling and working more externally and would miss a lot of those moments. So I think. Um, you know, it's been a lot of a lot of really good family time. There's a really special moments, but at the same time, as, as Nick yeah. says, I mean, we've been working really, really hard because we completely understand and get how challenging this is for mm -hmm. absolutely everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think the longer it goes on, for the more it's going to be, the more it's going to be felt, obviously, especially from, from a mental a mental health aspect. So this is a really it's a unifying moment to bring everybody together in it and just acknowledge. What everyone has been through this this traumatic experience, wherever you are in the world. For us, the work continues, and I'm sure for you, it's exactly the same. So we we continue to to, to throw our weight behind those things that we think are really important. That's great, and so nice to hear about Archie. That Archie is, you know, safe, and you are together as family. And thank you so so much for your time and your support. And uh, I remember meeting you, Prince Harry, when I think it was back in 2014. So it's been a long time since then. But very nice to see you again. And Megan, thank you for all the amazing work that you do. You are a role model to so many young girls. Uh, it is, you know, it was an honor to talk to you. And uh, you know, to everyone who's watching us right now, you can learn more about girls' education and the work we're doing on our website, uh, malala.org. Uh, and you can support us on the same page, malala.org slash donate. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm short-sighted, so I can't see the screen like clearly. Oh, no. So. I might, I'm going to wear my glasses so we can say a final bye. And say hi to, well, I don't know how she can talk yet, but you know, all my okay. best wishes, kisses, love. Yes, you too, and stay safe and healthy and well. And please let us know if there's anything additionally we can do to help support you and all of Thank you. Okay? That, that would mean so much. And just congratulations on all the amazing things you do. We see you on the news. So I'm really excited for your work and looking forward to all the amazing things you will create and do. Uh, and uh, very nice to see you. Thank you so much. So take good care, Malala. Bye, Malala.